Yes, indeed, God deserves to be praised and adored. He has been with us from the beginning of our revival to the last session. And today, God is going to bless us. God has a special message for you at this hour. And from pastor, he's going to reveal himself to us. And so God wants you to come. That is why the whole of this week, he is bidding us to come unto him. And it is an exchange. You know, yesterday he gave us a message which was a call to us. As he, Jesus, want to come into our lives, you also, you are called to come to him. If you forsake the things that do not help you to walk with Christ. And that was the call from Babylon. As we forsake them, Jesus is willing to embrace us unto himself. And so this is the last section and as we have been praying throughout the week, we need to have the assurance that we serve a faithful God. We serve all powerful being, and he is able to do all things. And so your prayer request is being answered. And if you receive it by faith and you walk in that faith, you are going to experience a new life as you go through the next activities in your life. Pastor is ready to speak to us. And God has prepared a last message for you. Stay tuned and keep on praying. As we pray, remember, 
Jesus wants you to come and he will bless you. Those who promised to support this ministry too, you can see the number there. You can forward any token that you want to um, support this ministry with and God will bless you. But before pastor comes, let's listen to our theme song and prepare our hearts for the message. beloved i greet you in the name of the lord all too soon we have come to the end of this calm revival 
on this media. And we want to thank God so much for all that he has done for us, for the word that he gave us, for the opportunity to speak unto him in prayer, and for the fact that he has started answering our requests. He's even done with answering some of our requests. And we want to say that, may the Lord's name be praised. In a special way, we want to thank you for the fact that you made time away so that you would listen to the word of God so that together we would pray. I want you to know that your toil and your weight and the opportunity that you had to spend with the Lord shall never be in vain because the Lord shall surely bless you. You may have some questions. You may have some uh, testimonies to share. We would request that you would send these questions and these words of testimonies to praise God to the numbers that you have scrolling on your screen. And we shall join you in praising God. For the questions, we shall duly answer them. And you shall continue to be blessed. It is my prayer that because of this program, we shall be drawn closer unto the Lord. And that because of this program, someday we shall meet in heaven. May the name of the Lord be praised. Amen and amen. We want to start off with a word of prayer. Can we bow our heads in prayer? Our gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you so much. This week you invited us to come unto you. And we have spent time coming to you. We have come once again to listen to your word. It is our prayer that you shall speak to our hearts. That you shall empower us from on high. That you shall anoint us with your Holy Spirit through the receiving of your word. You shall grant us strength from on high. And that you shall put our names in the book of life. Even as we share in your words. Use it to prepare us for eternity until we shall meet in heaven. And so even as I'm about to open your holy writs, hide me behind your cross. Anoint my lips and speak to your children. And grant that your children shall hear the sweet voice of the Heavenly Father. For we have prayed in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Today, I have captioned a message not for not, not for not. These two words are homophones. They sound similar, but they are very different. Not spelled N-O-T, and the other not spelled N-A-U-G-H-T. In other words, the title of our message is it is not in vain. It is not for not. All through the week we have been looking at the theme, come. Under this umbrella theme, we have been looking at some sub-themes. And so we looked at the Lord's long longing. And we got to know that the Lord's desire is that we shall come to him. The Lord desires that we shall be with him. So God wants us to be his people so that he shall be our God. That is the Lord's long desire. We have also looked at the fact that Jesus says, God says, come and let's reason together. No matter the nature of your sins, Jesus is calling unto us to come unto him so that we shall reason together. And as we reason together, his word says he shall forgive us. Not only shall he forgive us, he shall give us the power over sin. We've also looked at a subject which was captioned, Come, and I will give you rest. Under this theme, we looked at how Jesus says, We should come to him all we who labor and are heavy laden, and he shall give us rest. We shall have rest for our souls. We've also looked at the theme, come, take up your cross and follow me. Yes, we saw that Jesus is calling us to come from wherever we are and come and carry our burdens. The burdens that lay heavily upon us, we should pick the cross and follow Jesus on. We've also looked at come out. 
where Jesus is actually telling us to come out of unrighteousness, to come out of worldliness, to come out of things that do not conform to the Lord. But the question is, he has invited us to come. Yes, we have come. Is it worth it coming to him? Is the coming that we have come to the Lord worth it? That is why this message is captioned, not for not. It was a dilemma of Solomon. And I want us to read from Ecclesiastes. This was the dilemma of Solomon. How things were not supposed to, where things were not going the way they were supposed to go, as far as the righteous were concerned. Open your Bibles and let's look at Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 15. Listen to Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 15. The Bible says, I have seen everything in my days of vanity. There is a just man who perishes in his righteousness. And there is a wicked man who prolongs life in his wickedness. So here, uh, uh, Solomon is sharing his, his, his dilemma. That I have seen that sometimes those who are righteous perish in their righteousness. It does not end well with those who are righteous. But those who do evil continue to prosper. Solomon says, I don't understand. It was him who said also in Ecclesiastes chapter 8. Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 14. The Bible says that there is a vanity which occurs on earth. That there are just men to whom it happens according to the work of the wicked. Again, there are wicked men to whom it happens according to the work of the righteous. I said that this is vanity. Solomon says, I don't understand. What is the meaning of this? That the righteous suffer the lot of the wicked. And the wicked enjoy the, 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 the deal of the righteous. I don't get it. This is what is happening in our world today. And so Christianity, and I mean true Christianity, is becoming, it's becoming more and more priceless. True Christianity is gradually becoming a thing that is not so common amongst us. Many people think that, oh, I can, I can just worship God anyhow. I don't need to come to God wholeheartedly because I see the wicked prospering. And I see the righteous suffering. Solomon says, I don't understand. You know, when you read the Bible from Psalm. Reading the Bible from Psalm 37. Listen to what David has to say. Do not fret because of evildoers. Brother, do not be envious of the evildoers. He says, nor be envious of the workers of iniquity. Why? For they shall soon be cut down like the grass and with them as the green herb. Solomon says, yes, it is true. This is a dilemma where the righteous suffer the lot of the unrighteous and the unrighteous enjoy the lot of the righteous. But then he says, do not be envious of the evildoers. Why? Very soon they shall be cut off. This was the dilemma of Solomon. But I love the way he answered it here. In Ecclesiastes chapter 8, in Ecclesiastes chapter 8, and reading from verses 12 and 13. Can you open your Bible with me to Ecclesiastes chapter 8, from verses 12 and 13? Listen to what Solomon says. He says, Though a sinner does evil a hundred times, and his days are prolonged, Yet I surely know that it will be well with those who fear God, who fear before him. But it will not be well with the wicked, nor will he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he does not fear God. Solomon says, this is my dilemma. 
but I have the answer already from the Lord. That it shall be well with those who fear the Lord. It shall be well with those who come unto the Lord. It shall be well with those who walk humbly before the Lord. It shall be well with those who obey the will of God. But it shall not be well with those who do wickedly. Solomon says, let me, David says, let me explain much further. In Psalm 73, in Psalm 73, listen to this very well. Reading from verse 1, he says, Truly God is good to Israel, to such as appear in hearts. But as for me, my feet had almost stumbled, my steps nearly slipped. David is speaking here. For I was envious of the boastful. David is saying that I was envious of the wicked. I did not understand why it was well with the wicked. It looked as if the Lord was blessing the wicked. I was envious of the boastful when I saw the prosperity of the wicked. David continues to speak. For there are no pangs in their beds, but their strength is firm. They are not in trouble as other men, nor are they plagued like other men. Therefore pride serves as their necklace. Violence covers them like a garment. Their eyes bulge with abundance. They have more than heart could wish. David is saying why? He is envious of the boastful. Their hearts have more than they could wish. They have more than their heart could wish. In other words, everything they need, they get. They are rich. They are doing well. They scoff and speak wickedly concerning oppression. They speak loftily. They set their mouth against the heavens and their tongue walks through the earth. Therefore his people return here and waters of a full cup are drained by them. And they say, how does God know? And is there knowledge in the most high? Behold, these are the ungodly who are always at ease. They increase in riches. This is David speaking. He says, Surely I have cleansed my heart in vain and washed my hands in innocence. For all day long I have been plagued and chastened every morning. This is David speaking. How he was envious of those who were doing wickedly and doing well. How he was envious of those who were doing the unrighteous things and yet prospering. David said everything was going well with them. They were increasing in riches. Continuing from verse 15, the Bible says, If I had said, I will speak thus, behold, I would have been untrue to the generation of your children. When I sought how to understand this, it was painful to me. It was painful for me. David said, when I began to understand, it gave me much pain. He says, until I went into the sanctuary of God, then I understood their end. Not until I got to the, 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 to the sanctuary. Not until I asked of the Lord how their end was going to be like. I was sorrowful. And I really understand it when I went to the sanctuary. Verse 6, you say, surely you set them in slippery places. You cast them down to destruction. Oh, how they are brought to desolation as in a moment. They are utterly consumed with terrors as a dream when one awakes. So, Lord, when you awake, you shall despise the image. When you read from the last verse, the Bible says that... But it is good for me to draw near to God. Verse 27 says, For indeed, those who are far from you shall perish. You have destroyed all those who desert you for harlotry. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord that I may declare all your works. My brother, my sister, I want to encourage you that Choosing to follow Jesus is the best decision you have taken. Yes, it is good to come unto the Lord. He has invited us to come unto him. And it is the best decision that you have taken. Why? It shall be well with those who fear the Lord. Peter had a similar challenge. Reading the Bible from Matthew chapter 19. 
when we read our Bibles from Matthew chapter 19. This same message is shared in Luke chapter 18 and verse 28. Reading from Matthew chapter 19 verse 27. Which is the same recorded in Luke chapter 18 verse 27 uh, verse 28. Listen to what the Bible says. Jesus starts off by talking about marriage and divorce. And as he was teaching his disciples, teaching about celibacy, blessing the little children, having the young man, who the young rich ruler, who actually wanted to come and follow Jesus, but unfortunately did not know how. He was rich. He came to Jesus, and Jesus actually asked him to go and uh, keep the commandments. He said, I have been keeping the commandments since I was young. And Jesus said, go. In verse 21 of Matthew chapter 19, the Bible says, Then Jesus said to him, If you want to be perfect, go. Sell what you have and give to the poor. And you will have the treasure, you have treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. The Satan is that the young man heard these words. He went away sorrowfully and never came back. That was when Jesus said that, Oh, it is easy. For a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And he continues to say that with men it is impossible, but with God all things are possible. It's on this note that Peter asks this question, which is recorded in Matthew chapter 19, verse 27. Peter asks Jesus, then Peter answered Jesus and said to him, See, we have left all and followed you. Therefore, what shall we have? This is Peter asking Jesus some questions. Jesus, I want to remind you of how you met us. You met 12 of us in different times at different locations and you bade us to come and follow me. To come and follow you. That we should come and you make us fishes of men. We have left our all. We have left all that we have. We have left all our families. We have left all our sisters. We have left all our brothers. We have left our parents. We have left our job. We have left it all to come and follow you. And Peter is asking, what do we have by coming to follow you? What shall we gain at the end of the day? And listen to what Jesus says. So in verse 28, Jesus said to them, Assuredly, I say to you. When the Bible says assuredly, it means truly, truly. It means it is true and it is true again. So Jesus starts off by saying, Assuredly, I say to you, that in the regeneration, when the Son of Man sits on the, th on, on the throne of his glory, you who have followed me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Listen, when Jesus should come, he says, all you who have followed me, you these twelve disciples, I want you to know that there shall be twelve thrones for you. And you shall judge the twelve tribes of Israel. And verse 29 says, And everyone who has left houses, or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lungs, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life. Hallelujah. Jesus says, Anyone who has left at all, who has left family, who has left parents, who has left that beautiful job, who has left the pleasure of life, who has left the comfort of his own, who has, who has denied himself of pleasure just because of coming to follow Jesus. The Bible says you shall receive a hundredfold while here on earth. You shall receive a hundredfold and inherit eternal life.
Let's let's read from Luke chapter 18. Luke chapter 18 and see how uh, uh, Luke actually put it in Luke chapter 18, reading from verse 28. Listen to what listen to what happened. Then Peter said, See, you have left all and followed you. So he said to them, Assuredly I say to you, there is no one who has left house or parents or brothers or wife or children for the sake of the kingdom who shall not receive many times more in this present time and in the age to come eternal life brother Jesus is saying something to us if you choose to come and follow him he says while we are here on earth he shall bless and bless and bless and bless us again we shall receive a hundredfold for the sacrifices we are making unto the Lord. We shall receive so much blessings for having to choose to follow after Jesus. Coming after Jesus, he says, it is not for not. There are so many goodies when you follow Jesus. There are so many blessings when you follow Jesus. Yes, you will be blessed spiritually. You will be, you'll be blessed physically. You will be blessed health-wise. You will be blessed financially. You shall be blessed in your family. Your children shall be blessed because you have chosen to follow after Jesus. I don't mean to say that when you become a Christian, you shall become a rich man overnight. But the Bible says that when you come after him, when you respond to his call to come unto him, you shall receive a hundredfold. And he says, beyond how I will bless you here on earth, you shall receive eternal life. Yes. Eternity shall be yours because you chose to follow Jesus. I remember hearing this story about this Adventist family who lived in Jamaica some years ago. And this Adventist family, uh, they lived in the remotest part of the village. And every Sabbath, they had to trek to church. This non-Adventist family actually made mockery of this Adventist family. Because whenever they got to where they had to go to church, they looked very shabby. They looked very, very rough, very rugged, very dirty. And so they had to wash down before they go to church. And people were laughing. This non-Adventist family were laughing at them. They were laughing at them because look at you. When everyone is going to the farm, you are going to church. Lazy people making mockery of them, making mockery of them from the typical village but after some years one of this non-adventist family members became adventist and went to the united states of america and upon reaching the united states of america one day in the university of uh, in andrews university this advent non-adventist who attend adventists saw this adventist one of the member, family members of the adventist family in the states but she knew that they were poor people, poor people in the remotest part of the village. And so she asked, hey, hello, what are you doing here? <laughs> what are you doing here? As for you, I know you are poor people, and what are you doing here? And he said, <laughs> the, the, the Adventist family member said, well, what do you mean, what are we doing here? When the woman inquired, the poor people who were living in the remote part of the village had even come to the states way earlier than those that than this non-adventist family uh, 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 who, who, who felt they were rich they had been there earlier she was surprised you poor people you could come to the united states of america he said yes and so this non-adventist turned adventist started asking questions and said so uh, excuse me so where, where are your siblings where is this one where is this one where is this one and according to the testimony of this non-Adventist who turned Adventists, she said, the one who had not gone to school enough was a professor. The one who had not gone to school enough in the, non, in the Adventist family was a professor. So I asked myself, if the one who had not gone to school enough is a professor, then what is the rank of the one who has actually gone to school? 
You know, brother, I want to tell you that if you will follow after Jesus, despising the mockery that people will make of you, despising the name calling, denying yourself, and coming to follow Jesus and follow him aright, it shall be well with you. The Lord will bless you spiritually. He shall bless your health. Can you imagine how you are looking way younger than your colleagues who are taken to alcoholism, who are taken to drugs, who are taken to fornication and all that? See how you look when you should choose to come and follow Jesus. He shall bless you health-wise. He shall bless you financially. Yes, you are not the richest person, but if you follow after Jesus, he shall grant you the wisdom. He shall give you the understanding when it comes to monetary terms. And you shall be rich even in your poverty. It shall be well with those who come and follow Jesus. And beyond all this, Jesus says, I shall give you eternal life I shall give you eternal life would you come this week Jesus is inviting us to come would you say no to his call would you turn him down then you are in trouble because the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1 the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 1 Proverbs chapter 1 and I want us to read from verse 22. Proverbs chapter 1. Reading from verse 22. Listen to what the Bible says. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorners, and fools hate knowledge. Turn at my rebuke. Come unto me, Jesus is saying, turn at my rebuke. Surely I'll pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you. Because I have called you and you refused. Jesus says, I, God, the Bible says, God says, I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded because you disdained my counsel and will have none of my rebuke. I also will laugh at your calamity. When you are in trouble, I shall laugh at your calamity. God says, I will mock you when terror comes. When you are in trouble. When you are in trouble and you want someone to come to your deliverance, God says, I will mock at I will mock I will mock you when your terror comes. When your terror comes like a storm, when it is unescapable, I will make mockery of you, and your destruction comes like a whirlwind when distress and anguish come upon on you then you will call on me but I will not answer they will seek me diligently but they will not find me why because they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord they would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke therefore they shall eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to the full with their own fancies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them. And the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely. And will be secure without fear of evil. Hallelujah. My brother, if you would come. If you will choose to come, if you will decide to come unto Jesus, as he is calling, it shall be well with you. I pray that we will come unto the Lord. Because it is not for naught. It is not for naught that we have left all to follow Jesus. 
It is not for not that we have left family to follow Jesus. It is not for not that we have left our jobs to follow Jesus. It is not for not that we, we are disciplining ourselves to follow after Jesus. It is not for not that we are taking our cross to follow Jesus. It is not for not that we are denying ourselves of worldly pleasure. It is not for not that we are actually uh, 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 coming to him with our sins and confessing and asking for power from on high. It is not for not that we are coming out of worldliness and destruction it is not for naught he shall bless us and we shall receive a hundredfold and beyond that he shall grant us eternal life would you say yes to his call would you say yes to his inv invitation Jesus is inviting you come come Come. May the Lord bless you as you are coming unto Him. And remember, it is not for naught. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much. We want to deny the world and come after you. We want to listen to your promptings and accept your invitation. Because it is not for naught. Grant us the strength to come unto you. Grant us the ability to come unto you. Fill us with the spirits that you promised. And grant that the promises that you have given shall come to pass. Bless us while we choose to come after you. And beyond how you bless us here on earth, grant us eternal life. For we have prayed in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. May God bless you.